Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Jason the X with another review for the Alternate Heads channel. Like this video if you would, and also subscribe. We're really trying to build this channel, and YouTube makes it hard for us. But we're going to keep trying. We're going to keep going. So just subscribe, please. Anyway, guys, this is the review of the Mezco 112 Bluto and Popeye set. Now, look, I own a lot of Mezcos, and I don't review them. I'm sorry, but that's going to change because I got this set. Now, I got to tell you a funny story. Me and Nate were in a local toy store here, Jaden's Toys. Very nice place. Go visit them. They have two locations in Dallas. And we saw a Mezco Popeye figure. Now, here's the problem. When Nate and I see things at the same time, he immediately runs for them. He doesn't stall. He doesn't wait. He goes for it. And a part of me hates him for it, but a part of me admires the fact that no moss grows under his feet. He goes for it. So anyway, he got that Popeye. And, you know, I kind of hated him for it, but <laughs> it's okay. I actually got this double set. So neener, neener, neener on him. No, I'm just kidding. He's my boy. So anyway, this set is great. I grew up, I'm old. I'm in my 40s. I grew up on Popeye. I really liked it. And these Mezcos are fantastic. They're so much better than that single Popeye figure because you get a lot of stuff in here. <laughs> I'm just I'm just getting it, getting my digs in here. So anyway, let's go ahead and move Bluto and Popeye off to the side here. Oh, they're so good. I can't wait to look at them. Um a bit closer look. Also, I've kind of fixed the camera. I'm not using a uh, a uh, table tripod anymore with a bendable neck because it was just shaking too much. So, moving something more fixed. Anyway, here's a look at the box that it comes in. Very colorful, very classic. Bluto and Popeye Stormy Seas Ahead Deluxe Box Set. At the top, you've got 112. This is a big box on the side. You got some classic uh, cartoon over here of Bluto and Popeye. On the back, some more. I love these little sound effect, little bam and kaboom and pow and kapow. And on the side, you've got more of that same artwork that we saw. On the bottom, eh, nothing much, just, you know. And I'm not gonna throw this one because I keep these boxes. Oh yes, oh yes, I keep them because this thing comes with a massive amount of accessories. You've got, three trays all together. So with that, let's go ahead and get all the accessories out and take a look at them. Now, as you can see from this, this figure is loaded with accessories. I'm sorry, these figures are loaded with accessories. The first thing you get, you do get two stands. They are exactly the same. Nice anchor on there. White in color, you've got the peg. If you want to use that on the foot, you also have, if you take that peg out, you have two adjustable arms and a translucent plastic. Now, these are very good, uh, easily tightenable with the screws there. You have a uh, two section, two long sections in this section here. Very, very nice. These are great figure stands and they will hold up any pose that you need to put these guys into. And of course you have the articulated claw at the end, but these work very well. Whew, where do we go? Let's go to Bluto's. The first thing you'll get is this very, very lovely faux leather coat for uh, Bluto. It is Velcroed. And we'll get some shots of them in these individual jackets a little bit later on. But man, this looks really nice. Well done, well done. Huge jacket. And all you do is just get his hands off and then put, put his arms through, then put the fists or whatever hands you choose back on there. Bluto also has his cap, which you'll see here. Very nice. It does have a little plate of metal in there, and that is because, moving on to the heads, they're all magnetized. So you can get the hat in like a couple of different positions, and it stays on there pretty well. You can shake it off, but I mean, just something that helps it stay on the head. There's a little bit of texture inside of it for his hair, but you can get this kind of like in a perfect position, and right there, it stays on his head. And that's, that's getting to the other face. You got the big gritted teeth as I drop it all over the place. Big gritted teeth, squinty eyes, a little curl there, like a like an angry drunken Superman. Just, I love this figure. Well, these figures, I love this set. And you have another head. It's a beat up head. You got kind of uh, one of his eyebrows up. You can kind of see some teeth have maybe made their way out of his head. 
is this one magnet this one is magnetized as well for the hat you can put it kind of a kilter if you want to he's been he's had the crap kicked out of him but it is magnetized as well nice detail on the beard and the hair and that vein in his head it's just great and moving that aside we're going to go ahead and get into the hands he does have two big gripping hands and these are just you know throttle popeye maybe get it around his neck or something open very nice vein in there also shout out to dallas vintage toys that's where i got this from uh, i love being able to go down there and actually look at a figure before i buy it you have two fists and these are probably what i'm going to leave on there because these guys didn't need much to kick the crap out of each other just their big old mitts and then you have two gripping hands or two c hands as i heard from uh, bobby val over balivers and look you can even see like dirt underneath the fingernails and these guys are they're, they're they work on deck. They're sailors. You know, that's what happens. I'm a sailor, ex-sailor. Now, getting to the accessories, he does come with this rusty, beat-up wrench. And the thing about this is, it is metal. This is a metal wrench. And I really appreciate that. You can take that and put it into any one of his hands. They will flex enough, any of these uh, gripping hands. Okay, I have to change the batteries in my microphone, or, well, my receiver, but yeah, you can get this wrench in both hands. You just got to kind of, the hands on Mezco toys are very resilient, I think. I mean, I have yet to have one, like, break on me uh, as many times as I've had, uh, like, Blade and Batman with those hands. And you can get that, that, that wrench in either one of those hands, so... The other accessory that he comes with is a, a hook. It's a boat hook. It's a fishing hook. I use it to hook things. It is uh, a murder weapon. <laughs> he does have a cut between his ring and middle finger. So you can get this in here. I would recommend using the hand as much as possible to get this hook in there. Do not put any pressure on this because this is not metal. This is just plastic. Which, because if this was metal, this would just be a nail. You know, I don't know. Maybe you could just replace it with a nail if you broke it. But yeah, you can get it between the fingers, and that's both hands. I could probably wedge it further up in there, but you see that it's starting to kind of separate there at the first knuckle. So I wouldn't recommend going any further, but yeah, you can get that hook in his hand. Getting that out of the way. The other accessory that he comes with is a kettlebell. A 300-pound kettlebell. Yes, I am able to lift 300 pounds, folks, so get straight. No, it is metal, though. If you, This is a metal kettlebell. I love that. It's just, I don't know if it's lead or what, but it does have some weight to it. And you can get that in any one of his hands, and you can get Bluto to hold it up to show off his strength. Or he's getting ready to do some curls or something, but yeah, it'll hold. I don't know how well the figure will hold this. You definitely probably want to use the stand because believe me when I say this thing actually has some really good weight to it. Not a lot for me, but if you're having a figure hold this, I, I question if the joint, and we're going to try that on the Bluto figure to see if he can actually hold this thing up. So moving on to some of the accessories for Popeye, you do get two different jackets. You get a wool pea coat. Um, I don't know if this is wool. It does have a wire in the, the, uh, the Bluto jacket didn't have a wire, but this one does have a flat piece of metal in the collar, so you can kind of get it around his neck a little bit more, and it is closed with Velcro. It's only got the hook Velcro on this side because it hooks into the, the woolen area. I think this is just felt, but it still looks really good. And the other one, which we'll move into the accessory, he has some uh, foul weather gear, as we call it in the Navy, a little raincoat, yellow slicker. Also closed with Velcro. You can get any one of these on. Just take the hands off and slip it over his, uh, slip it over him. With that, he also has a rain slicker hat. There's no, uh, he does have magnetized hats, but not on this one. It's just cloth, but uh, because of uh, how much it gives, it fits over his head very nicely. Just, you know, hey, it's, it's raining. Got a, got a cover up. He has his sea bag with Popeye down the side. You can close this up as well with the two drawstrings, maybe give it a tie, maybe throw some accessories in there. I think I'm going to actually uh, have mine with his accessories inside the bag and this uh, looped over his hand. 
And moving into some of those accessories, he has his spyglass, which you can see through this plastic, but I can't see through this one. So I thought you could see through it, but there's something in there. It's something white, uh, but it does uh, collapse and extend with two sections here. And looks really good with the colors, how it looks like brass. But this is a nice little, nice little piece of uh, accoutrement to him. He has his compass, which is very small. And if you get in there, let me zoom in just a little bit. You can see some detail on the compass. Let me see. What does that say? Oh, I need to get a magnifying glass. I'm, I'm blind. I'm getting old. Here. But he does have his little compass here. Come on. Tighten up there. So you can see the anchor on there. I, I, I need to really look and see if I can see writing on there. And you've got a little needle inside, north, south, east, and west, and all things. I would have liked to have a picture of, like, olive oil on the other side of this. I know it's not a watch, but that's not traditional, but, you know, it, it I think it would make sense. But anyway, yeah, the compass looks good. You probably put all that in his bag. He also comes with, of course, a can of spinach. Just a plain can, guys. Um, it's not a sticker. This is a... Oh, it actually is. I can see the seam right there. It doesn't feel like a sticker. It feels pretty good. But yeah, you can see the... Ring is in the can. Very good detail on this. But with an open, with a closed can of spinach, he also has to have an open can that he has crushed, and you can put this in any one of his. Well, you can put this in a certain amount of it, certain of his hand. Yeah, you can put this in some of his hands so you can replicate that effect, which we'll show off a bit later. He does have several pipes. Some have a. Uh, these are very thin. I see why they package them like this. Let me go ahead and get one out. But you've got a pipe that's got the uh, little puff of smoke coming out of there, corn cob pipe. And then you have a regular one without the smoke. If you don't want the smoke, I'm sorry, I had to say that. I had to say that. So moving on, he does have two other hats that he comes with. He has traditional sailor Dixie cup hat. And the good thing about this, another metal plate. His heads are magnetized, and he does have more of a traditional kind of kind of chief's cap that's got the metal in there. I don't know if that's the lodestone. That might be the lodestone there, the metal piece. But yeah, it's nicely weathered, kind of dirty. Looks like it's got some pieces out of it. He needs another hat. Now he does have three different heads. This one, got the one eye closed. He does have that little hole in the side of his mouth. And you can take that and you can put his pipe right in there. You just gotta find which way it goes in. Because you don't want to force that in. Because I'm telling you, that is so thin where it goes in. You just got to find the correct spot, which I cannot. Just be careful. Oh, there it is. I got it. So that's the angle you want to put them in at. So be careful when you're doing that. These pipes are, looks like they're pretty easy to snap. He does have another head that, uh, hmm. So this one has a little bit more gritted teeth, but it also does have the hole for the pipe there. Not much of a difference on these heads, but the good news is they are all magnetized to keep the hat on there. We'll use the hat on the other one over here. Now, I don't like this hat because it doesn't seem to like sit properly on the head. You can see it just doesn't like have it does it just doesn't seem to want to sit properly. Maybe it just needs to be off to the side or something, but you see how it's coming off there? I'm not a fan of that. And you have the other head it is the beat up head. That has a nasty bruise on the top. A little bit of blood coming down. He does also still have a hole for his pipe there. So yeah, looks good, but he's taking a beating here. Yeah, but I prefer the sailor cap just because the heads are all shaped the same. So I don't understand why his hat just doesn't seem to want to sit, sit right on there. They need to look at some old Popeye cartoons and see like, did he have a special way that his hat sit? It just doesn't look right to me. So I'm going to always go with the Dixie cup. See, there it is again. It's just off the side of his head. I guess that looks okay, but I wish it sat a little further down. Uh, the beat-up head, though, is not magnetized. Just to let you... Wait. 
The beat-up head is magnetized. Oh, it is. Okay. I was wondering about that. I never really used the beat-up head. I don't want to have butt kicking. Okay, well, yeah, it is magnetized. It will stay on there. So, ignore me. He'll even cover up that lump on his head. Now, as far as hands, he does come with two fists. Which, nicely colored. Got some detail on them. He has two gripping hands. This one is more for that can of spinach. He's got to find the right angle to put it in there. And there you go. Looks good in that hand. Uh, it looks like this other hand, though, can take hold of... Oh, no, no, that is way too small. I thought we could probably get this in there, but it is uh, rather small. But you can probably use this one for holding his compass. Yep, fits perfectly in there to hold the compass right about here. He has a uh, pointing hand, or, you know, Darcy blows or whatever. He does have another gripping hand, which you can fit the uh, full can of spinach in there. The hands and fingers will give, but yeah, you can put the spinach in that hand before he crushes it. And some of these other hands will work for the uh, spyglass because he's going to extend it and you want to probably get that one in there. And let's see, where is another hand? Where, I, I, okay, there we go. So you can fit the, these two hands around the spyglass for him to look at. But that is all the accessories that come with this set. And man, there's a lot of them. All right, so enough about accessories. Let's get on to the figures. Now, these guys look really good together. Um, I wanted to put their jackets on just so you could kind of see how well they look with their gear on. Measuring them out before we go any further. Bluto stands in at about seven and one quarter inches tall with his hat. And Popeye comes in at five and seven eighths with his hat on. I know I'm kind of doing this out of order, but I wanted to show you how big the figures are standing next to each other. We'll do some comparisons in a bit, I'm sure. sure. Let's start out with Bluto with his jacket on. I'll show you how to get that uh, jacket off of him. But man, this is that head that we showed off. Rotating my camera up just a little bit so you can kind of see that. It looks good. And that hat does come off. Now, as far as the jacket, we just kind of open it up with the Velcro and let's take a look at the figure Beneath it, you do have to pop the hands off to get this jacket off properly. So you just take it off of them, and there you go. You got this Bluto figure, and he looks he looks very dirty. Like he's been working. I thought it was like at first I kind of had another look at this figure. I was like, is that like did I get dirt on the shirt? But no, that's just how it looks. Because if you look at the pants, they are actually kind of uh Kind of dirty as well. And it's a good detail on this guy. They're like double stitched on the knees. Getting down here to the boots. They have a lot of detail on them. Brown leather. You can see laces on there. The belt is a separate uh, piece. It doesn't come apart, but it is a separate piece. But it goes through these plastic. The, 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 the belt loops are molded into the plastic. And it's kind of stitched onto the pants. They're not actually going through, but... Very nice detail. I mean, you can see where a zipper would be on his pants. Coming up to the shirt, kind of dirty. Got the two buttons, and they're just two pieces of plastic kind of glued on there. Still, good detail, good detail. Kind of got the collar caught in here. You can see he is wearing an undershirt, a T-shirt underneath his button-down shirt, which you can see here on the sides. I do like to push these up quite a bit just so they don't get in the way. And then getting back up to that head sculpt. This is really a good Figure and he looks so good big this thing is has, has some heft to it as well I can't express that enough he is very bulky get around to the back of his britches here he's got pockets that are sewed on and they are actual pockets you can put some stuff in the pockets not the side pockets but the back pockets you can put some stuff in there now as far as articulation on Bluto not Brutus Bluto he does have a very shallow peg in the foot you're not going to get a lot out of it. You can go, you can tilt to the side about that much. Oh, he has soles as well, just to show that off. Tilt them. He does have a single jointed knee that goes up 
about that far. I don't want to like move the clothing up because we all know what Mexico's are with the clothing. He has what I can assume there's a cut right here in the thigh. Backing up the camera a little bit. So you can twist that thigh back and forth. As far as Van Damnation, well, here we go. That's as far as I want to go with his pants and everything. So yeah, we're just going to put those back. And very, very stiff joints, by the way. He has uh, what is a ball joint in the bottom of the torso. His pants, his shirt is starting to come up a little bit here. And even though it is kind of stitched on, it's starting to come up a little bit. But you can see where that ball joint would be. I'm going to tuck his shirt in a little bit. But he does have a ball joint at waist. We can go back about yay far, forward about yay far. I'd be, use caution because, like I said, that's, that shirt is stitched into the pants. No uh, other upper articulation. I've seen a couple people take the clothes off of some of these, and they're very detailed. I do not have that type of uh, the skill needed to do that, and I don't want to ruin my figure, so I don't do it. He does have a double barbell joint in the neck, so you can get some pretty good expressions out of it. Oop, and there it goes. Well, you can see there's the barbell right there. Kind of shallow here, but it does help. If we didn't have that, we would have very little articulation. But you can go to the sides a little bit, go to that side, back, and just rip his head off again. Just, and I'm going to leave it off, going to leave it off so we can bring in the beat up head and put that one on him. Even though he's not that beat up, you can kind of see, yeah, he's missing some teeth. He got kind of a shiner on the side there, but what's that? What's a shiner? It's nothing. Oh, and, and the, uh, hands, they are on a ball joint with a peg going into the hand that will rotate. It's double pegged on both sides. So you can get some pretty good movement out of that wrist. Change it back. If you want a horizontal or a vertical tilt on there, you got it. But yeah, Bluto is a good looking figure and I've retrieved that head because this is probably how mine is gonna end up being displayed. I'm probably gonna put the jacket on him and open, but yeah. Moving on to Popeye though. Popeye looks good in his pea coat. I put one of the pipes that does not have uh, the smoke coming off of it. Let me move. Bluto to the sides, so we're not focusing on him, but yeah, Popeye looks good with this wool coat on. I wonder if you can get this one over his fist. Bluto is hard to get over the fist just because he's, they're huge. Oh, wait, we can, get, we can slip this off. We can do this. I wouldn't try getting it on with the hands on just because it's a little bit, it's very difficult. It's just easier if you just go ahead and yank the hands off. There we go. So looking at Popeye, he is wearing his uh, sailor outfit. He does have the buttons on the pants. It looks like he's wearing underwear underneath there. It's kind of dark. He is wearing some underwear. So Popeye does have some, some draws on. <laughs> Got the nice tattoo on the sides of the arms. That's some bosun mate stuff right there. And if you're Navy, you know what that means. I think Popeye was a bosun's mate. His cape in the back. I think he looks good with the pipe. Mine is going to be displayed like this. I'm probably going to have one of his hands open to hold his sea bag over his shoulder like Popeye would with the pea coat on. Move down, you got the buttons, they're just they're just glued on plastic pieces. Like I love the rolled up sleeves. His uh, bell bottom pants. He probably tucks into his boots before he does anything on deck. You got these nice work boots here. You can see the laces on there. And they are jointed here, uh, which we'll go ahead and get into the articulation now that we've seen a little bit of the figure. But as you can see, they have a cut here and they can go back not that far, forward about that far. Not a lot of articulation here. It does have a cut at the top here that you can kind of move around a little bit. But mine seems to be a little frozen over here. Um, I'd use caution when moving that around because you can get what you need just off the bottom of the boot. So The knees are uh, single jointed if I know Mezco. Let's see. Nope, they are double jointed. He can go all the way out. What can we do for Van Damme Nation? Let's see. Okay, the pants are going to prevent it from going that far, so... That is about how far he can go on the Van Dam Nation. There is a cut at the thigh that can move kind of the upper thigh right here. And I don't know if I did it with Bluto, but yeah, you can go forward about that far. You can go back about that far. How far can Bluto? Because I did not. It's a very tough joint. You can go forward about that far, back about yay far. So not very far on the back, but quite, you know, you can get a little bit on the forward. It's not a very articulated figure. He does have a waist joint that is ball. He has a waist ball joint. Oh, okay. So he's got one at the waist and he's got one 
at the torso as well. So you can get some pretty good articulation out of there. Universal joints go on the arms, goes out about that far. You can make a full 360, but mind you, you are dealing with soft goods. So I would only go about yay far. I mean, you're gonna twist the shirt if you go further. So just understand that it is capable, but there's stuff in the way. The arms, only about 45 degree, his big old forearms. And you have that same kind of double peg ball joint on the hands. You've got a double joint at the bottom and top of the neck, so you can get some pretty good articulation. Oh, let me move his hat. So you can go to the sides very far, very long neck on Popeye here, as I keep moving him off camera because I'm looking at the figure and not at the camera lens. Back about that far, up top about that far. And his ball head, we'll just go ahead and put his hat back on him. Now I won't show them with the other jacket. It will, that other jacket will go on there just fine. Now this hat, I did say that you can get this on here pretty good because it's just soft goods. So there you go with the yellow slicker hat on there. I might take a photo with the other jacket, but I'm just wasting time with that. So I'm never gonna have this this rain slicker on them just because I don't I don't like the foul weather gear. I mean, the hat does fit better if you turn it that way. So there you go. And just so you can see it with the beat up head, there you go. Kind of grinning. He may have he may have lost the fight, but hey, look at the other guy. Or Popeye didn't lose the fight. He'll eat some spinach and kick your butt. Now we already measured them out. We're gonna compare them with the standard bearers for this line. We have our, our worthy Captain America and our G.I. Joe classified snake eyes. So overall, these guys are really good. I, I, I'm a fan of classic cartoons, especially those that I grew up on even though I'm sure Popeye was dumped like way before I was a kid. But man, they look good together, come with a ton of accessories. There's so many possibilities with them. I'm gonna love taking pictures of this, these guys for the channel. But yeah, uh, it is a pricier set. Uh, I picked mine up from Dallas Vintage Toys. Uh, always a shout out to those guys when I go in, I find something I'm looking for. So uh, you can probably get this set online. I'm not sure what the availability is, but I gotta tell you, that first Popeye figure really rose in price. So. If you want this set, I wouldn't wait too long on it. I go ahead and get it. Anyway, guys, I am Jason the X. Thank you for watching this video. Subscribe if you can, like, because we're trying to build this channel. We want to make something here and give you guys some great tour reviews and some awesome podcasting. Follow us over at Instagram at Alternate Heads Podcast. And you can follow me on Twitter and Instagram at Jason the X. Until next time, guys, I'll catch you later.